Hey everyone, Cap from TCG Break here, bringing you the seventh episode of my deck building series. With the deck's previous success in our recent remote dual tournament, shown in the last episode, I am certainly motivated to continue to improve upon the deck's consistency overall, and I look forward to continuing our deck building journey as an updated Forbidden and Limited list is likely to be released somewhere around June, so I am eager to go up against new matchups as the meta starts to form post ban list. So with that being said, without further ado, let's get into the changes I made to the deck this week. Starting with the Ice Barrier lineup, I'm playing 3 Revealer of the Ice Barrier, 2 Speaker for the Ice Barriers, and 1 General Wayne of the Ice Barrier. I believe this is a great ratio for the deck overall. As with the previous weeks, I am slimming down the Ice Barrier monster lineup in order to fit more cards, such as hand traps and additional trap cards. Additional Ice Barrier monster support, I'm playing the one copy of Zuigen, the one Warlock, the one Hexa Spirit, and the one Defender. And as for the tuner targets, I'm playing the one copy of Fishborg Launcher, and the one Crystron Citri. I have dropped the one copy of White Stingray utilized in the previous episodes. I'm still playing a fairly standard frog package with three copies of Swap Frog, one copy of Dupe Frog, and the one Ronin Toten. As for the Hand Trap lineup, I'm playing three copies of Psyframe Gear Gamma and the one Psyframe Driver. This is great if you're able to use it on your turn as it may give you a free Crystron Hucky Fibrax or Ad Emancipator Risen Dragite. Now moving on to the spell lineup, I'm playing three copies of Medallion of the Ice Barrier, one Freezing Chains of the Ice Barrier, and one Winds over the Ice Barrier. Again, since I am slimming down the Ice Barrier monster lineup, I find that one copy of Freezing Chains works perfectly fine in most cases, though it is great to have as an additional extender nonetheless. As for the trap lineup, I'm playing two copies of Different Dimension Ground. I have cut this from the previous week from three copies to two in order to accommodate for an additional trap. As for the Paleo lineup, I'm still playing two Paleozoic Canadia, two Paleozoic Dinomiscus, and two Paleozoic Olenoides. And a new addition to the main deck, I'm playing three copies of Trap Trick. Trap Trick has the effect where you can banish one normal trap from your deck and then set one card with the same name directly from your deck and it's also able to be activated that turn. Though after Trap Trick resolves, you are only able to activate one trap for the rest of that turn. Trap Trick certainly makes the deck more consistent overall as it allows you to get into your Paleo traps fairly easily, which is why I'm playing two copies of each and most of the time, you are not worried about the prospective downside of only being able to activate one trap for the rest of the turn, as you typically want to activate Trap Trick after you have activated most, if not all of your set traps. Trap Trick currently has an assessed market price of $2.50 per copy. And to round it out for the main deck, I am of course still playing the three copies of Crackdown. This card continues to prove to be very useful overall, as being able to take control of one of your opponent's monsters and possibly use it as link or synchro material can certainly help this deck if it would need just one additional extender in order to OTK your opponent. Moving on to the extra deck lineup, I'm still playing the one Crystron Halki Fibrax, one Marinces Coral Anemone, and one Boral Sword Dragon. As for the Xyz monster lineup, I have slimmed this down to the one copy of Totally Awesome and the one Bahamut Shark. Moving on to the Synchro monsters, for the Halki Fibrax targets, I'm playing the one Crystron Quandax, the one Desert Locust, and the one Shooting Riser Dragon. As for the level 8 monsters, I'm playing the one Ad Emancipator Risen Dragite, a new addition in the form of Cyframe Lord Omega, as well as one copy of White Aura Whale. Omega is a great target to Synchro Summon into if you are able to use the Cyframe Gear Gamma on your turn, as it has the once per turn quick effect during the main phase, where you can banish Omega from your field and one random card from your opponent's hand face up until your next standby phase. 
Also, during your opponent's standby phase, you can target one banished card and return it to the graveyard. Omega also gives the deck some much needed recursion, as if it's in your graveyard, you can target one other card in the graveyard and shuffle Omega and that targeted card from the graveyard into the deck. Omega currently has an assessed market price of $2.75 per copy. White Aura Whale is also an excellent addition to the extra deck as it has the effect when it's synchro summoned where you can destroy all of your opponent's attack position monsters. It is also able to make up to two attacks on monsters during each battle phase, and if it attacks a defense position monster, you can inflict piercing battle damage. If White Aura Whale is destroyed by an opponent's card, whether that be by battle or card effect, and sent to the grave, you are able to banish one other water monster from your graveyard, and special summon White Aura Whale as a tuner. This currently has an assessed market price of $4 per copy and the remaining synchros are the same as the previous weeks, with one Crystron Phoenix, one Crystron Query on Gandrax, one Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier, and one Trishula Zero Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Moving on to the side deck, I'm still playing three copies of Droll and Lockbird, three Artifact Lancia, and three Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. New addition to the side deck, I'm playing three copies of Dark Ruler No More. This is great against the Dragon Link matchup, as well as any deck that is putting up multiple monster negates, as it has the effect where you can negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls until the end of that turn. Dark Ruler No More currently has an assessed market price of $5 per copy. And to round it out for the side deck, I'm still playing the one copy of Harpy's Feather Duster, as well as two Twin Twisters. So with these changes in mind, Let's get into the duels for this episode and see exactly how well the deck performed.
As shown in the match replays for this episode, the deck performed rather well overall, and I look forward to continuing to mold the deck as the meta may shift with the upcoming ban list. With that being said, that's all I have for this episode. As always, if you enjoyed the video and would like to see more like it, feel free to give us a like and subscribe. Feel free to leave any suggestions regarding changes you would make to the deck in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, until the next one, have a nice day.